spark up a bowl and tuck yourselves in. Once upon a time is about to begin. But we're talking about Hansel and Gretel. Once upon a time, there's a g- old poor woodcutter. Abner. And uh, he lives with his wife on the edge of a forest, a really big forest. And he has, uh, he lives on the edge of the forest with two kids, his two kids, not the wife's. She's like a stepmom. And, a, and apparently a, a cat and a pigeon. Uh, there's a cat and a pigeon in, living we'll in this household. We'll talk about that later. They have, he has two kids, uh, Hansel and Gretel. And that's the, the namesake of this story. So uh, <laughs> I hope you knew they were involved. Um, but this was a poor woodcutter, so he didn't have like, he didn't have money very much money. They didn't have a lot of food around the house to support that this it's family. It's like his depression. They live on the edge of this great forest. They have no money. They barely have enough to feed themselves. Famine strikes. And uh, now they have... They got... They got... <laughs> that's, that's it. Uh, nothing. <laughs> they have no way that they're going to be able to feed all four of them. Yeah. So, uh, it's like, I don't know what to do. I can't feed, I can't feed everybody. So and he's then, presenting the problem. Yeah. Then, We're out of food. What do we do? Yeah. The wife of the woodcutter, let's call her Sharon, says, man, you know what? Early tomorrow morning, we will take the two children out <laughs> into the, th- <laughs> into the thickest, thickest part of the woods. <laughs> Make a fire for them and give each of them a little base of bread. <laughs> then leave them by themselves and go off to our work. They will not find the way back home, and we will be rid of them. Um, so uh, she says. She says that. Get rid of the kids. <laughs> they eat too much. That's it. He's Good. like, I could never do that. There's no way that I could uh, bring my leave my kids out in the woods uh they get eaten up by animals for sure yeah. for shower and then she nagged him he probably was like why don't we just cook the cat <laughs> just, there's a pigeon been hanging out on the roof for a long time get a rock <laughs> that's it we don't have to spend so, any money then she gave him no peace yeah mm-hmm. she nagged him forever but p I E C E is like you ain't getting none yeah. until you get rid of the kids. <laughs> so naturally, he gave in and got rid of the kids. <laughs> what was that? that was Four or five days? Yeah, <laughs> if that. But the kids, the kids overheard this. They were, they were, they were hungry. And Gretel started crying. Yeah, she's scared. No, she's it's like five. And Hansel is like eight. Yeah, so the kids are pretty young. They're hungry, and they overhear this, and they're like, "I'm gonna, f- I'm gonna f- figure this out." Hansel's like, "I gotta help my sister out because she's, I gotta make sure she's not, you know, she, she's definitely not gonna survive out there in the woods." Mm-hmm. But I got an idea. So he, he's like, "I'm gonna go outside. There's pebbles out there that glisten in the moonlight." He's thinking that. That's he's like, "I got this idea," and then the parents fall asleep, and he sneaks out and does that goes out the 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 front door the split door they lived in a barn (laughs) hansel and gretel were born in a barn (laughs) so yeah he goes out picks up some pebbles a bunch of pebbles white pebbles puts them in his pockets fills up his pockets and then sneaks back in then he gives credit to god oh he's like god's gonna save us (laughs) i got the pebbles but god's gonna you know do the rest of the work don't don't you worry gretel god will save us and then they go to sleep and then first thing in the morning early she's like wake up you lazy bones uh we're gonna go out and cut some wood because that's what this family does we're woodcutters like like the lincolns like like the lincolns lincoln logs wood cutting we're gonna do that out in the woods out in the great forest, Let's you get, get some out of the racks. Here's, Here's a piece of bread. Let's mm-hmm. go. Don't don't eat it until midday. Because that's all you're getting. They know what's coming. Yeah. They heard it. Yeah. So then Gretel holds it under her apron because Hansel. He's got a pocket bread. full of rocks. He's gonna go hit the streets with a pocket <laughs> full of rocks. He's gonna make his way. Oh. <laughs> so they get out into the woods. Yep. Into the wood. And, and then Hansel the keeps stopping. He's looking back all the time. Mm-hmm. Dad's like, hey. Hey. I was on the road. He's like, mind your legs. He's like, I'm just looking. My cat's on. My cat's out there. It just wants to say goodbye. Uh, just, I, I'm saying goodbye to my cat. His white cat. 
you know, that cat that you could have cooked instead yeah. of putting us out here in the woods. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Dad. And the stepmother said, nonsense, that's just the sun hitting the roof. No, that's not your cat. They get it back further into the woods, and the wife's like, hey, go um, get your tw- get some twigs and make a f- fire. Yeah, don't get logs. I don't want you too warm. But they make a stack of twigs. That small is mountain. a small mountain. They had a bonfire. Uh, so the, uh, the wife, Sharon, Sharon, was like, uh, I'm, we're going to go cut wood. Uh, you can take a nap. They go, they leave, and they made some trickery. Kids are there, and they think that they're okay because they they hear the sound of an axe yeah. hitting wood. So they actually devised a device that they set up. Like, they didn't go cut wood. No. They went and they tied a branch <laughs> to a tree, started whacking it against something. I'm telling you, if he's that smart, he could probably trap an animal <laughs> and feed these That's kids. True. Or that cat. And they, they eat Don't their they eat their bread. Fire. And then they pass out, and uh, the fire dies down. And then they wake up in the middle of the night. And, and Gretel starts crying. Yeah, she's like, they left us. There's no fire. We're going to die. And Hansel's like, don't worry. There's moon right there, and it's going to... I've been dropping all these pebbles on the way here, so I can get... A, the The moon will guide us back Pretty home. Pretty novel idea. Yeah, he's a smart kid. Yeah. The This moon does its trick. Pebbles glow. They walk all the way through the night. They walk all the way through the night. In the morning. And then they get there at dawn. They get home. And then stepmom opens the door. And she's like, You wicked children, why did you sleep so long in the woods? We thought that you did not want to come back. Ah, so they're back home now. The the father's father's stoked. He's like, he, because he couldn't imagine beaten without them. Yeah, well, they come back and then they go back to bed and then it's. She was like, these are going to be hard to beat. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to lock the doors from now on for a while. Yeah. And uh, we'll see what happens. He was like, listen, we tried to kill them. Uh, I feel like we should stick it out a little while. They seem like maybe they could even help more around the house. Uh, Hansel has a cat. We could cook that. <laughs> Hansel's been hiding his cat around here. He's talked about it a lot. I've never seen it. <laughs> I've never seen any either. But there's a cat. I guess it's a really clean cat. A white cat. Sometime later... A yeah. famine happened again, so what? It just took him to leave him in the woods for one night for them to have all his food again? Like, yeah. She she pestered him again. He, if a man says A, then he must also say B. Right. If you gave in once, he has to give in again. So the second time wasn't even his choice. Like, there's choice was taken out. He, she broke him once. He's now broken. Mm-hmm. So yeah. she knows yeah. she'll win. So he she, just yeah, she already has she's that. cocky now. She's like, yeah. I can break him. Yeah. I can break him. And then yeah, he gave in. And Second time. And the kids overheard again. And Hansel was like, oh, I can do that. I can go out there and get the pebbles again. And he tries. But she locked the door. And they went to sleep and woke Sharon. up. Sharon was like, Here's here's some more bread. Midday bread. Here's some midday bread. Less than before. That now they both they both can carry their own bread. But he crumbles his up and puts it in his pocket. And then he stops back. and he looks back. And then the dad's like, why are you looking back? Something about your legs again? <laughs> Hansel, Hansel so, so, remember what I said last time? Hey, that that again. Granny, check his legs. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> something about your legs again? Uh, Hansel's uh, taking a mental note of the woods. And he's recognizing... His his it's a familiar yeah. part of the woods now, because he keeps looking back. He's he's dropping these breadcrumbs. Yeah. Right? Anything he can use to identify where he's going. Hans is like, I'm looking at this white pigeon, my white pigeon out that's on the roof there. Um, it's saying goodbye to me, so hang on, I got to do. <laughs> Say bye bye pigeon. And the stepmom yelled at him again and said, "There are no, there's no pigeon there. It's the sunlight hitting the roof." Yeah. And she probably called him a name. Because if there was a pigeon there, we would have cooked it. 
Yeah. Stop playing. If we had bird to eat and you didn't say anything before now, you deserve to go in the woods. You little... We're going even deeper now. Yeah. That's why they got deeper yeah. into the woods. He's creating an yeah. excuse as to why he's turning around so they yeah. don't know he's dropping yeah, things. Maybe. And they're going further. Deepest further. part of the forest they've ever been to. In their whole life. They're deep in the so woods. then they make another fire. Probably a big fire. Okay. Same old song and dance. Less bread, more fire. I wish they'd have been in planes so maybe somebody could see our smoke. <laughs> really ain't nobody going to see it. Nobody. And the first one, when they built the fire and then they came back home, they woke up because the fire went out. So she's like, now they'll sleep longer because it's a bigger fire. She's really banking on the animals wow. to come eat this them. This is an awful thing to do to two kids. They make him sound like he's defending and he's actually really a decent guy, but he did drop his kids off in the woods and now a second time. Yeah. Right? Further in the woods. More determined than the first time. Or they tell him, sleep here while we go chop wood, and when we're done, we'll come back and get you. And they're like, wait, you said that last time. I, you think I believe you? I'm only eight, Dad, but... I get it. This is... Just go. <laughs> yeah. Just go. I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> I'm going to eat this bread. <laughs> and you're going to go. I'm really disappointed. Be strong, you son of a... <laughs> go get that... I hope it's worth it. Gretel shares her bread with Hansel because he dropped all his bread. And she's like, she's like, dude, why are you wasting the bread? I'm trying to get us home. And then they pass out in the forest again. And they wake up and little girl Gretel starts crying again. And the little boy was like, it's okay, Gretel. I threw this bread down, and we'll use it to follow. We'll let the moonlight hit the hit the bread, and it's going to glisten in the moonlight. He's a really bright kid. This kid's going places. Yeah. yeah. Just deeper into the woods. Yeah. Uh, and definitely not out of the woods, because the breadcrumbs don't glisten in the moonlight. Maybe it would have glistened, oh, yeah. but they were all gone because all the birds ate the bread. Yeah. There's thousands of birds oh, that they're piece of father cannot find yeah. to feed his children yeah. it's because he's a woodcutter not a bird cutter so the birds eat the bread and now they're screwed now they're totally screwed and then he's like that's all right god will take care of us yeah. so they travel around and so they stayed faithful right. so how long did they walk it was three days and they were out of bread on the first day yeah and so they're I really think, hungry and they ate some berries they found berries on the ground a couple berries and they probably hallucinated the entire thing after this well, and then they laid down under a tree then they wake up uh from their their slumber they start walking again they get on going mm -hmm. they get on they're going they just get deeper and deeper into the woods at this point it basically went the wrong way so they uh they're going deeper and deeper into the woods yeah. and and then it's like midday again so they keep, they keep coming back to this midday that's when they hear a bird singing so sweetly they listen to this bird bird's awesome and then it flies down and it's like I'm like, oh, that was a good song. And then flies <laughs> off down through the woods uh, further. I don't know where. Like, at some point, they're just, they just chase this bird down. Like uh, sirens. It drew them in. Yeah, the sweet song. And then they end up at a house. Like a and then the sweet house that they see. And it's made out of cake. It's a house made out of bread. The roof was cake. And the windows were sugar. Clear, sugar. clear sugar. And he's like, dude, let's... Uh, have a good meal <laughs> because we're going to eat cake and sugar yeah. and this is a good meal. This is the mentality of an eight-year-old. A house in the middle of nowhere made out of bread and cake. <laughs> like, they think they're in heaven. And then he goes up to the roof and he takes a bite out of the roof and she, and he's it's like, lick the, lick the window. Uh, and so she's eating sugar and she's like, yeah, yeah this is amazing. I'm a five-year-old and... <laughs> Sugar is my favorite thing. And then they hear a voice uh, calling out to them, uh, Nibble, nibble, little mouse. Who is who is nibbling at my house? And they're like, uh, the wind, the wind, the heavenly child. So the kids continue to eat, and then an old woman, uh, as old as the hills, yeah. comes out of this, this uh, gingerbread house. As old as the hills. Which... The beginning of the time. She says, stop touching my house, but I'll yeah. bring you inside and cook it's you like, a nice meal. Who brought you Who brought you here? Uh, yeah. Why don't you just come inside? 
um, you can stay with me. I'll take care of you, and and everything will be fine and dandy. I'll make you some awesome foods, delicious uh, foods. This isn't her first rodeo. She feeds them yeah. a big, beautiful meal. Yeah. Their last meal. And then uh, they lay down. Tucks them in the bed. In, yeah. With white sheets. And this is where, this is like, this is, they just know. They've come to the conclusion. They're now comfortable with the fact that this is heaven. The kids in, uh, in the back room on these beds must be made out of, like, marshmallows. So, so they're sleeping, and then she goes into a different room. She's looking at herself in a mirror. And she's like, I'm a witch. And so she goes into the room, and, there, and he, she, she looks, and she sees that they're sleeping peacefully. And she's like, not on my watch. And she rips Hansel out of bed, like it's on. She t- goes outside of the house to the stalls. Yes. Throws him in a big ass yeah. bird cage. On the outside of that house, that's where like the oven is, and that's where the cauldron is. Then she wakes Gretel up, and was like, "Hey, Lazy Bones, wake up! You need to make some real delicious food for your brother because I'm gonna eat him. I need him to get real, real fat, and I'm gonna cut. I'm a butcher him." Because I got a butch, I have to cut him in half in order to fit him in the kettle. And a five-year-old knows how to cook amazing food, because he he ate all the all the good stuff, Bye. steaks and. A whole month goes by, and she doesn't understand why he's not giving fat. Because she keeps giving him things. Every morning she goes to check on. She says, "Little boy, stick out your finger and, and check how fat you are." Yeah, because she can't see. Because side note, witches, witches have red eyes, and that and they and that means that they can't see well. He was tricking the witch because she couldn't see with by holding out a yeah. bone for his finger. So, dude spends a month in the birdcage. His sister. sister's getting fed shells of crayfish. So, crayfish is crawfish, and they're not they're like lobsters, but oh, they're the, they're, they're uh, freshwater fish. So they're smaller, and um, she would only get the shells. So you get eat the shells. So you're talking like the most minimalist amount of meat that you can imagine scraping off a shell of a small it's like a large spider small tiny lobster. <laughs> it's like, like a scorpion like the size oh. of a fat scorpion wow. that isn't as tasty. But now it's but the his, day. But she's so mad because it's a month later and so she tells a little so, girl yep. Go get some water. I'm going to boil him. I don't care if he's fat or not. I'm going to eat him tonight. <laughs> I'm hungry. It's time to get down on some Hansel. She could have, you know, ate some of the bread. But she had another plan, which was get Gretel in the oven first. She was like, normally I would just eat one of you right now, but now I'm going to have both of you. And Gretel God. is reluctantly doing this, still like crying. Sobbing. And she's like, I wish that we had just gotten eaten. In the woods, so uh, then she gets it ready. I guess she does it. So she makes the the kettle and the fire and gets and, uh, the water boiling. Yeah. And uh, then the witch was like, "Check the oven. We gotta make sure that it's it's hot enough. We're gonna bake first before we cook your brother. I'm gonna do some baking." And uh, Gretel was like, "Playing dumb." She so, fell for the house, but she no. She's like, "I don't know how to do that. I don't I don't think I can do that." And she. Like saying that she wouldn't be able to fit in there. And then the witch was like, hey, if I can do it, you can do it. Yeah. And then she's like, watch, watch. I can put my head in there. Uh, so as she was putting her head in there, Gretel gave her a shove. Yeah. Shoved her the rest yeah, of the Gretel. way in it. Closed the iron door and sealed it. Yeah. Turned her into Freddy Krueger. And the witch howled. And then that burns up miserably, yo. Yeah, she dies. It's that day. She's fed up. She ain't thinking clearly. Yeah. And uh, she's hungry, and Gretel took advantage. Yeah. Boom. All of a sudden. Bro. It just happened out of nowhere. She just murdered somebody, and she's just jetting to, yeah. to her brother. Grab the key from the witch. When Gretel freed Hans from the, the cage, it was like a bird being freed. He just burst out of there like, like this was the best moment ever. And it's like this... Awesome thing, and oh, and guess what? Now there's pearls all over the house. Yeah. Like, I didn't notice all that before, yeah. but now all of a sudden, yeah. there's pearls and stuff all over the house. They're hooting and hollering. It's a party. It's a pearl party. <laughs> it's a pearl party, and Hansel and Grell were invited. So now they're on their way home with s- pockets of pearls. Pockets full. Jewels. Pearls and jewels. Pockets. And that's when they come up to a body of water. 
Lots is a large body of water. Uh, hence the crawfish. That's where they came from. There's no there's no bridge nearby. Hansel's like, I don't... We can't get across that. There's no bridge. There's no walkway through this. Uh, I think we're, we're screwed. And Grotto's like, no, I see a duck. She goes, if I ask... He'll take us across. If I ask, that's all. Like yeah. that's all it takes is a question. Oh. If I ask, kids it'll help us across. The duckling comes to them because it noticed that they were talking about it. It was like, oh, those kids are talking about me, so I'm gonna go over there. And she asks, "Duckling, duckling, here stand Gretel and Hansel. Neither a walkway nor a bridge. Take us on to your white back." The duck's like, yeah, dude, I'll totally take you across. The duck agrees. But he's trying to put both of them on the duck, and Gretel was the one that was like, wait a minute. <laughs> you kind of gained some weight over the last month because that <laughs> was going to eat you. I think we need to do this one at a time. They, they made it across one at a time, but they made it across as a supportive duck then they just started they just walked for oh, they started walking yeah and then after a few hours and then they started noticing familiar woods areas that where hansel had been like kind of scoping out and looking yeah. back at the house so, they, and they find they see the house they get home and they, and they see home. see that it's in the distance and they run to it slow motion running through the fields and they get to the house break open the yeah. door rush inside papa dad's glad they're home it's been a little over a month and then they embrace, wrap their arms around the, the woodcutter, Dad, um, a, Abe, Abner. And Sharon is somehow dead. Uh, she died because she was the witch. So they, at that point, they lived happily ever after um, together. My tale is done. A mouse has run. And whoever catches it can make for himself from it a large, large fur cat. The end.